Hi, this is Brooke Selby with Quality News Network, coming straight from San Diego Gay Pride 2013. I'm here with the Visible Bodies coordinators, Scott and Liat. They've done great work for making visibility in our local community, and it seems like they're going to be stretching farther out. So uh, Visible Bodies started as a student visible visibility project at UC San Diego. Um, the purpose of it was to create a more trans-inclusive LGBT resource center at the college. Um, one, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a digital version of Visible Bodies. And we have a Google software developer who's helping us to create you know, a really professional and nice looking um, slideshow on the internet that we're gonna that, uh, will look really nice we think um, from there we're also we want to do other cities as well um, so we're kind of we're not we're probably not going to have any more people in San Diego be part of visible bodies but we are going to go on to other cities like Portland Minneapolis maybe Denver Atlanta down the line and do visible bodies on those locations as well and our first plan we have somebody in Portland who's going to coordinate visible bodies in Portland so that's our that's the next place that we're going to go with it. Now this is really amazing work I feel like you two have been doing here and I feel almost that it's been a catalyst. Have you seen other projects firing up since you guys started this about what is a year or two ago? Well, it's, it's interesting because um, here locally, you know, it's gotten a lot of press, it's gotten a lot of attention, and I think it's spurred a lot of people to be talking and, and, you know, getting engaged. I know that nationally we're seeing a lot of things coming out of the trans communities in different cities. Um, Washington, D.C. had a, a big billboard project that was actually funded, I think, by the city, um, and it was really inclusive and really diverse and amazing. And we're seeing more and more of these. Uh, there are other photo projects springing up around the country too, and they're just incredible. The voices of youth are being highlighted in one particular photo project, it's just incredible. So we're seeing it. Okay. Um, I'm the producer of this photography project, Visible Bodies, which is a way for transgender people in San Diego to tell their stories through portraits and uh, written word. Um, so every portrait, as you'll see, uh, represents the participant's gender in one way or the other, so they kind of got to decide how they wanted their photograph to be taken, and then along with that, they wrote their own captions. So what you're going to hear today, you're going to be able to see these six participants' portraits, and uh, then they'll read their caption to go along with that. Um, so just so you know a little bit about the history of this project, it started as a student project at UC San Diego back in 2011, um, and it's grown far beyond what we expected. So we, we expanded it outside of UCSD when we realized that you know we really didn't have a, whole, a large pool to draw from at UCSD. So we expanded it to the larger San Diego community, and we have now 30 participants, 31 participants, excuse me, in San Diego. So they've gotten their pictures taken. We did a month-long exhibition at San Diego Pride, um, which was just was fantastic. We had a lot of great feedback. If you got to see it, you know it was it was um, it was a really great exhibit. Um, we're looking for we're looking at a few other locations to bring visible bodies uh, from here on out, and we're also expanding beyond San Diego, which is very exciting. So this is Alexander. His pronouns are he, him, and his. This is who I am right now. Most days I am just me. I am plain and just going about my life. Most days. Some days though. I like to be pretty. And that doesn't always mean a dress and makeup. Sometimes it just means a tie or a vest. I am a beautiful boy. One day, many thousands of dollars in the future, I will not wear a binder in order to be seen as a boy. And I will still be beautiful. I will still wear makeup or vests or ties or skirts. And I will do so whenever I feel like it. It's true, I'm a 49-year-old polyamorous transsexual lesbian whose kids still call her dad. In the old days, I used to fantasize about lesbian sex. I'd imagine something like a dozen beautiful women, no clothes, their skin glistening with coconut oil, their smooth bodies sliding across my... Wait, that's not a fantasy, that was my last birthday party. <laughs> I am a 62-year-old trans male who also happens to be blind. I am pictured with my seeing eye dog, Landon. He's down here on the floor. He's very wasted from yesterday, by the way. <laughs> uh, who is a certified therapy dog. My photo shows us doing something that we both love, 
bringing joy to disabled and elderly people through pet-assisted therapy with the San Diego Humane Society. Even as a child, I knew something was amiss with my gender. As early as 1960, I remember feeling male on the inside. When I played games with friends and siblings, I automatically took on the male role. For example, I was the father when we played house. You've got me twisted, yeah.